Britain's scramble for Africa's energy and mineral resources. Britain is a colonial master of most African countries and has benefited from its mineral resources over the last decades, and it's still doing so. The increase in the scale of the UK's involvement in Africa's resources is surprising, and so too is its disregard for the rights of those affected. Over the past few decades, there has been a new scramble for African resources as foreign governments and companies have sought to control the continent's reserves of minerals, oil, and gas. As documented in The New Colonialism, Britain's scramble for Africa's energy and mineral resources, a new war on what report, 101 companies listed on the London Stock Exchange now have mining operations in Africa, and combined, they control resources worth more than $1 trillion. Although it is not alone, the UK government has used its influence and power to ensure that these British mining companies have access to Africa's raw materials. A significant portion of the Global North benefits from a system of regional, bilateral, and international trade agreements that creates opportunities for exploitation in countries in the Global South. An estimated $134 billion reportedly enters the continent each year in the form of loans, foreign investment, and aid, all under the pretense of assisting Africa in its economic development. However, an estimated $192 billion is also taken out of Africa, primarily in the form of profits made by foreign businesses, tax evasion, and costs. The Case of Western Sahara While the scale and scope of the UK's involvement in the exploitation of Africa's resources are staggering, so too is the complete disregard for the rights of the people involved. A key example of this can be found in Moroccan-occupied Western Sahara. Since 1975, Morocco has controlled most of Western Sahara. The majority of the population was forcibly evicted, with many going to refugee camps in the Algerian desert, where 165,000 people are still displaced. The occupation by Morocco is a flagrant violation of international law, which grants the Sahrawi people the right to self-determination, including the management of their natural resources. No state in the world recognizes Morocco's self-declared sovereignty over the region, according to the International Court of Justice, and there are no links between Morocco and Western Sahara. Furthermore, Morocco has consistently obstructed UN efforts to resolve the conflict through a referendum, despite the fact that over 100 UN resolutions support this right to self-determination. Various case studies of abuses and disregard for people's rights the hunt for gas and oil in Moroccan-occupied Western Sahara is one of the case studies in the report. Since 1975, Morocco has controlled most of Western Sahara. 165,000 refugees still reside in camps in the Algerian desert after the majority of the population was forcibly evicted. The occupation by Morocco is a flagrant violation of international law, which grants the Sahrawi people the right to decide for themselves how their resources should be used. This right to self-determination is supported by more than 100 UN resolutions, but Morocco has obstructed UN efforts to use a referendum to resolve the conflict. One such business is Edinburgh-based and London Stock Exchange-listed Cairn Energy. It is a member of a consortium that, in December 2014, became the first to drill for oil off the coast of Western Sahara and subsequently find it. The consortium is led by the U.S. company Cosmos Energy. Sir Richard Durlov, a former director of Britain's MI6 Secret Intelligence Service, has served on the Cosmos Board of Directors since 2012. Oil companies like Cairn are directly undermining the Saharawis' right to a referendum on self-determination by making deals with the Moroccan government, despite the fact that Saharawis have long protested against oil companies' exploration activities in Western Sahara. Cairn Energy, based in Edinburgh and LSE listed, is one such company. It is part of a consortium led by U.S. company Cosmos Energy, that in December 2014 became the first to drill for and later discover oil off the coast of Western Sahara. The former director of Britain's secret intelligence service, MI6, Sir Richard Durlov, has been a member of the Cosmos Board of Directors since 2012. 
Saharawis have consistently protested against the exploration activities of oil companies in Western Sahara, but by doing deals with the Moroccan government oil companies, such as Cairn are directly undermining the Saharawis' right to a referendum on self-determination. Cairn's claim to support human rights are hard to square with Morocco's activities in Western Sahara, where basic rights and freedoms are routinely suppressed by the same authorities which have given oil companies rights to operate. The British government actively promoted firms like Cairn through trade, investment, and tax policies rather than attempting to restrain them. For a very long time, successive British governments have been ardent supporters of trade and investment regimes in Africa that are liberalized and give foreign companies access to the continent's markets. Additionally, they have consistently supported policies that encourage low corporate taxes and oppose the construction of regulatory or protective barriers by African nations. In response to the report's findings, War on Want thinks that both the UK government and UK corporations need to be held accountable for their involvement in the plunder, as well as for how they behaved there. It backs demands that mining profits stay in the nations where they are mined and that raw materials be produced locally. British Foreign Policy The British government actively supports firms like Cairn through trade, investment, and tax policies rather than restricting them. British governments have been ardent supporters of open trade and investment policies in Africa that give foreign businesses access to local markets. Additionally, they have consistently supported policies that encourage low corporate taxes and oppose the construction of regulatory or protective barriers by African nations. Furthermore, British governments have continually promoted giving rather than legally mandatory mechanisms to address corporate human rights abuses committed abroad. Such controlled mechanisms are effectively meaningless. Not to mention the open-door policy between the public and private sectors in the UK. Cosmos Energy is one of many senior government officials who have left their positions to serve as directors on the boards of these mining companies. Sir Richard Durlov, the former head of the British Secret Intelligence Service MI6, has served on the Cosmos Board of Directors since 2012. The current stage of the race for African resources is unmistakably a continuation of the objectives of British foreign policy since 1945. Access to raw materials has always been a significant factor in British foreign policy toward the continent, if not always the main factor. Currently, foreign, private interests are appropriating Africa's natural resource wealth, and their actions are leaving a devastating trail of social, environmental, and economic damage. This is according to the new colonialism, Britain's scramble for Africa's energy and mineral resources. What are your thoughts on this, guys? Let us know in the comments section below. Subscribe for more interesting content. Also share with your friends.